welcome to the lecture series on human computer interaction i am ms dipali avsekar assistant professor from valchand institute of technology in today's lecture on human memory we explore the capabilities and limitations of human memory at the end of this session students will be able to recall and understand various types of memories memory functioning analyze the reason for forgetting information apply techniques to improve memory what is memory human memory is a constructive process through which we actively organize and shape information it is the ability to store and retrieve the information much of our everyday activities rely on memory don't you think so information processing theories have subdivided memory into three different stores the first sensory memory second short term memory third long term memory most of us always have a curiosity in their mind and why is that some people are able to remember things very vividly the birth dates the anniversaries what is stored in today's session we will try to link this by exploring each type of memory moving ahead this is the typical structure of a memory it consists of sensory memory short term memory long term memory now what is this sensory memory the people have a special ability and capacity for briefing retaining relatively large amount of information this capacity is called sensory memory sensory memory is basically information preserved in its original sensory form for a brief time it acts as a buffer for stimuli received through senses a sensory memory exists for each sensory channel for iconic memory we have visual stimulus for echoic memory acoustic stimulus for haptic memory we have touch stimulus moving ahead iconic memory is a visual icon of the original stimulus memory for visual stimuli is referred to as iconic memory now uh, it you must be thinking about what is actually iconic memory i'll try by an explain i try by telling you an example or showing you an example like memory for visual stimuli is referred to as iconic memory which can be defined as very brief sensory memory for some visual stimuli that occur in the form of mental picture for example if i ask you to look at this picture and then close your eyes and try to see the picture what you can see in your mind is an iconic memory of the image in the picture don't you think so students close your eyes and try to observe you might see this blooming rose isn't it typically iconic memories are stored for slightly shorter period of time than the echoic memory now echoic memory is actually the sound human remembers sounds and words in slight different ways memory for sound is referred to as echoic memory which can be defined as very brief sensory memory of some auditory stimuli now for example read this on the slide j p d c z p v d g then read the following k l o l x y z l k did you notice any difference k l o l x y z l k which lists of the letters were easy to recall list 2 because of acoustic memory the first list caused interference 
and thereby made it more difficult to remember. So did you get when we try to pronounce J, K, P, D, C, Z, P, it's difficult because there is a lot of interference. On the other way, in the second list, if we try to pronounce K, E, L, O, L, X, Y, Z, L, K, it becomes easy. Now, moving ahead, we try this activity. Pause the video for some time and perform this memory game. Now, what are the students expected to do in this? The students are expected to observe the upcoming slide for a minute and then note down all the possible objects that could be recalled by them. So, here you have to use your visual stimuli. So, take your pen and paper, pause the video for some time and observe the next slide for a minute and try to recall as many objects you can see from there. This is the slide. Moving ahead, the next is the most important that is the short term memory. Short term memory is also called as working memory. Now working memory is where active thinking occurs. Computing solutions to maths problem allows you to comprehend what you are reading, figures out the meaning of what has been just said to you in conversation. So, short term memory is defined as limited capacity store that can maintain unrehearsed information for up to 20 seconds. It acts as a scratch pad for recall of information. The most important thing for conversion from sensory memory to short term memory is the attention. Now what is attention? Attention is the concentration of mind on one out of a number of computing stimuli or thought. It is clear we are able to focus our attention or not. So most of the times it happens that when the faculty is teaching in lecture, students are not able to understand. Now why is it so? They are physically present and mentally absent in the class because they are not attention. They are not paying attention. They are not attentive. So, the senses, they are able to see the slides, they are able to listen, but that is not getting converted from the sensory memory to the short term memory. And in order to convert from sensory memory to short term memory, you require is attention. The capacity holding time for short term memory is about 7 to 2 items and duration without rehearsal is approximately 30 seconds. Now, long term memory. Long term memory is an unlimited capacity store that can hold information over length period of time. That is, once information passes from sensory to working memory, it can be encoded into long term memory. This is the sensory memory. If you are attentive in the sessions, you pass it on to working memory and here when the information is present in the working memory, you do real cell, you do repetitions and through repetitions, this short term memory is converted into long term memory. Therefore, if I ask you today to say twinkle twinkle little star poem, most of you will be able to do it. Why is it so? Because since childhood, when you are not even knowing the meaning of it, you have done repetitions, repetitions for n number of times. That is long term memory. You are able to retrieve it because it is a permanent storage. You things get permanently, permanently stored in the memory. Now, there are two types of memory that is explicit memory and implicit memory. This is further divided into semantic memory and episodic memory. Episodic memory is some episodes we are able to remember like uh, the first birthday or the first wedding anniversary, your first day at school and semantic is related to some general knowledge where you have some meaning. Now, long term memory is permanent store. Now, the most important question, why do we forget? We forget because of the two things that is ineffective encoding and decay process. The second is interference. It may be proactive and it may be retroactive. How you can improve your memory? 
study uh, some suggestions to improve your memory study repeatedly to boost recall spend more time rehearsing or actively pondering material make up material personally meaningful you can use some techniques like mnemonics associated with peg words something already stored or make up make a story and try to remember you can use a procedural way to remember acronyms or chunks these can be the ways in which you can try to improve your memory so the most important thing is you need to effectively repeat your content in a sequence so that it gets converted from the sensory to the short term from the short term to the long term these are the references for the students to refer and uh, if you have any queries you can mail your queries and doubts and questions to ddosaker@witsolapur.org thank you for your patient listening